Um, typically, uh, th this one can be edited out pretty pretty easily, saying that uh, the parishioner accused him of or stealing or, or whatever, however you want to do it. Uh, the parishioner called him Satan or called the Reverend Satan. Again, both both this one and this one can be edited out pretty simply, uh, but it'll find. Practically every instance of passive tense. I've, I've never seen an example of a paper come back where someone had edited it out and had a passive score of zero and it was marked off for passive. So if you find them on here, it, it should be able to find all of them for, your, for grading purposes. Um, that's one of the nicer things about this, once you'd want to use it for. Here's uh, another really good example of what StyleWriter will do for you. If there's a wordy section, like all of the, typically can be all the. We can, accept, we can accept that as long as it makes sense. Um, in attendance, present. Anytime you can take two words and take it down to one, it's a good thing. Now, um, here's, here's another great example of something like that. Without, in the absence of, you're taking four words and putting it down to one, not losing any meaning. So here's Microsoft Word, Tools and Metrics. Um, your spelling and grammar check is a lot more complex and a lot more powerful than what you probably think it is. Um, under the Tools and Options tab, you have Spelling and Grammar, and there's a tab called Show Readability Statistics. You're going to want to activate that. Uh, now, after you activate that, when you run a check, you receive statistics on how many of your sentences are impassive. Um, you get an index for flesh reading ease, and that is uh, the flesh reading ease and flesh Kincaid grade level are um, metrics that the government uses to assess the difficulty of documents. And typically when they're doing contracts with different uh, companies for, for documentation or uh, manuals or uh, forms, they'll have to meet certain levels of flesh reading ease. And for flesh reading ease, the higher the number, the easier it is to read. That's all you'll have to remember for that. And for the grade level, the lower the number, the easier it is to read. It, of course, doesn't mean that the work is comparable to a person in eighth grade if it gets an eight. So it just means that it's a little bit more clear. So I'll be showing you how to activate that. You're going to be going up here to um, Tools, like we said, Options, and then here's the Spelling and Grammar tab. Now it's the same in Word 2003 or Word 2007. You just have to get to your um, Tools menu a little bit different. And then here is the Show Readability Statistics. Now with our sample sentence here, we are going to hit um, Spell Check, if I can find it. All right. And can you show how to get to that one more time? Sure go within the um, tools menu, tools, options. options, spelling and grammar, and then in the grammar it'll show readability statistics. All right, and again um, we'll pull that back up. All you do is hit spelling and grammar check to, to run it, and then um, here you'll see readability, passive sentences zero obviously, uh, reading ease is 100% which is pegged, that's the highest you can get, it goes from zero to 100, and then grade level, well Somebody just starting out could read that. Um, grade level goes all the way to 12, and it stops at 12. So um, what I would typically focus on for legal documents is not to worry about grade level so much, but if it gets substantially over 11, look at it. Um, you might need to re-edit some passages. Um, reading ease, typically if it's under 75, you've, you've got a pretty legible document. Most government standards, by the way, are uh, 60 for flush reading ease and 8 for grade level. So if that gives you any idea about your tax forms, they're, they're really easy to read. Flesh Kincaid says so. Back to the slides. Um, internet. There's a lot of options out there on the internet, uh, very, very few good ones. These are the three best sites that I know, and uh, maybe they can help you out a little bit too. The Elements of Style is actually one of your recommended books for the semester, but uh, little did anyone know you can get it for free. It's on Bartleby, Bartleby's website. And it has a lot of different uh, commonly misused or commonly uh, confused sections in grammar. And it's one of the seminal books on writing. It can help you get through a lot of tricky spots. Um, the next is Sentence Sense. There is a community college that started this website. And uh, even though it's a community college, it has one heck of a website for uh, grammar rules. Um, it's very, very easy to navigate. Um, it's, it's won numerous awards. It's a great website. Uh, Paradigms the third. It is a huge, huge, huge repository of writing tools and tricks, techniques, and programs that can help you break out of a writing funk. Um, I'll pull up those websites here real quick so you can take a look at them. 
uh, here's the elements of style on uh, Bartleby's. And again, we'll, we'll post the presentation and the um, uh, the video of this presentation also on uh, online, so you'll be able to view it at your at your convenience. Um, but here's the Bartleby's passage. Uh, it has all kinds of different rules. Here's what sentence sense looks like. It's got grammar, usage, writing, and resources. And then paradigm. The nice thing about paradigm too is uh, not necessarily for your legal writing courses because I don't think it would help you much, but if you're writing something else and you want to see uh, peer review or you want to collaborate with other people and see what they think of your writing, it has a um, collaboration section so other people can take a look at your writing and tell you how great it is. Hopefully. And um, the other things as well, um, dictionary and thesaurus.com are the two best um, you know, dictionary and thesaurus resources that you've got. Um, there's too many of them. At Webster's now has spyware and pop-ups and all kinds of lousy things. But here's something you may not know. If you go to google.com, it has a feature uh, built in. So if we go here to uh, define uh, lake and hit Google search, it's going to give us definitions. Now, some people don't know about that. Some people do know about it. But instead of going up to different uh, dictionary resources, it, uh, this is kind of an all-in-one repository of different definitions. The only thing I would warn you about is it is going to pull definitions from all around the World Wide Web. So not only will you get things such as uh, you know, the fact that obviously a lake is uh, a body of water, you'll also hear wonderful things like lake is a German rock music band and lake is a station on Metro's Gold Line. Well, fantastic. But if you are using a word that's a legal term, um, Yep, so, sorry. Ah. Weird. Anyway, or you're using a smaller term, there we go, then um, it can give you a lot of contextual uh, definitions for that word. So it's a good little, good little tool to use. Maybe even in class, who knows. But anyway, um, that concludes the presentation. If you have any additional questions or need some more help with StyleWriter, shoot me an email.